Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirited Outdoors. We're gonna do another medicinal plant video. Um, now I'm kind of right here in the back side of my yard. Uh, this is where I park my tractor. You've seen these trees probably in some other videos. I know I had somebody ask me to do a sassafras video. I would have liked to have done this way back early in the spring because this root of this, this tree and I have a lot of small saplings coming up from it up in these bushes. Uh, so I just leave this thick and I come out here occasionally and dig some up. Uh, but the reason I didn't do this early on is because there weren't no leaves and there wasn't no way for me to show you how to identify it. The main way is by smell. Now this tree has a really good smell. Uh, it's, it's in the cinnamon family. Uh, but you can distinctly tell by these leaves and it has three different, this is an oval shaped leaf. This one has three lobes and then there's one down here that looks like an oven mitt. It's just got like a thumb on it. So there's a couple of different leaf patterns on here similar to wild lettuce does. I've got a lot of wild lettuce growing up behind this beauty bush. And y'all I have discovered with wild lettuce you get one plant has a different leaf pattern at the top, most of it, than it does the bottom. And I have several different varieties of it. We're going to do another exclusive, uh, in-depth wild lettuce video here before long. But today is sassafras. Uh, the most common thing is dig this up and make a tea out of the root. Uh, however, a lot of this plant, this, the leaves are dried and used as filet to make gumbo. Uh, so when you hear Hank Williams Sr. sing about that filet gumbo, that's sassafras that they've drying and putting in it. Um, but I'm going to read you a little out of it. Again, in this video, we're using the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. Uh, so, and this, like I said in another video, this is proven to be a really good informational book. Uh, really good for the common person that, that's not big in it. And y'all know I struggle with some of these long words, so just laugh at it and go on. It's okay. I, I promise you, I don't mind. Uh, we're going to touch on the edible use too because I know there's a lot of foraging going on. This is an edible plant. Nearly every part of the tree is useful for food or medicine. The powdered leaves of the tree are used as a thickener and flavoring. That would be filet. The flavor is both earthy and spicy, and it is similar to corandier seed. The most famous use of sassafras root is in a traditional root beer recipe. However, the use of sassafras root was banned in 1960 by the Food and Drug Administration after studies found saprole, the chemical component of sassafras root, to be a possible carcinogen and linked to saffron to the use of higher rates of cancer and liver damage with extended use. It is considered safe for short-term use with proper dosage. So be aware that this, they think now it could cause cancer. Y'all, I'm not going to say it does or it don't. I don't know. I'm just reading you what I read out of this, and there's people smarter than me that studied on this stuff. So, uh, And you can still smell very strong in this these dead limbs right here on this other one i broke off i have broke them off and used bark on them or uh, in decoctions i think the mail lady just pulled up to get a package we're shipping some pottery off medicinal use the leaves root bark and mucilages pith from the tree are used medicinally so in this tree right here and i'll break this off i don't know if you can see uh, but inside that, there is a pith up the center of those stems. Now, that was used as an eyewash. Uh, so, I, I've read about this in several different books. Before I get into this, the reason I wanted to use do this video earlier in the spring, in the old, like the Foxfire books, and then the old folklore books of the old-time people, the Appalachian Mountain people, the just old country folk from way back in, the, in the, the depression days and even the pioneer days. They used this root as a means of what they called getting over the winter doldrums is what I read. Uh, so they would just kind of a pick me up after winter, been depressed, cabin fever and just, but it, it stimulates blood flow. So that would be one of the reasons that worked. 
So, let's get into the medicinal use. Skin inflammations and irritations. Make a thick mucilage from the pith of the sassafras root for the treatment in skin irritations and inflammations and apply it directly to the wound. That also could be used as an eye wash. It heals wounds. Apply a poultice from the fresh crushed leaves to put on a wound. Headaches and menstrual pain. The pain relieving properties of sassafras leaf and root bark tea are helpful in headaches and many menstrual symptoms. Including cramping, bloating, and heavy bleeding. Kidney problems, swelling, and fluid retention. Sassafras leaf and root bark tea is ex excellent diuretic and helps flush toxins from the body. Dental care. A sassafras twig makes a great toothbrush. Not only leaves behind a pleasant flavor and clean teeth, but also has antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory benefits. Lice treatment. Sassafras oil. Says see below for recipe. Is used to get rid of head lice. To use the treatment, add one fourth tablespoon of sassafras oil to one half cup of warm coconut oil. Mix and apply to the scalp. Oh. Arthritis and anti-inflammatory. Sassafras root bark works well to reduce joint pain and inflammation. That is root bark, not the whole root. So you got to keep in mind different parts of that root use different things harvesting uh, i know that you when you're just making a tea uh, like sassafras root tea is prepared differently than most teas sassafras roots small pinch of salt optional and water pot with a lid clean the roots with a brush under running water remove all the dirt place sassafras roots in the pot, cover with cold water, filling the pot about three quarters of the way full. Add a small pinch of salt. Use more roots for stronger tea or more water for weaker tea. Make a weak tea if you have not had it previously. Put the water and roots on high heat. What in the world? Roots on high heat until it comes to a boil, then turn it down the heat. Keep the roots at a high simmer until the water turns a deep red color. This may take a few hours. Turn off the heat, cover the pot with a lid, allow tea to steep for five to 10 minutes. While it slowly cools a little, strain the tea and drink hot. It takes on a more bitter flavor when cool. The tea can be refrigerated and reheated for later use. Sweeten the tea with raw honey if desired. Oh. Uh, Here's a recipe I'm gonna give you for the oil while I'm while we're reading on it. A large piece of sassafras root water. Dig up a large piece of sassafras root, at least two inches, five centimeters thick, and as long as possible. Clean the root, then peel off the bark. Keep the root bark. Allow the bark shavings to dry. Place the dried bark into a pot of simmering water and allow it to simmer four to six hours. The oil will be released from the bark. Allow the water and oil to cool undisturbed in the refrigerator overnight. Skim off the oil layer on the top of the water. This oil is very potent. Dilute it before use and do not take internally. So y'all, that is just some stuff on sassafras. I know somebody had requested a sassafras video. Has a lot of uses. Uh, and the more you read, the, the uh, Charles Millsburg's got a thick book. Y'all, they use this plant for a lot of different stuff, a lot of different teas. Uh, it was one of the first exports, I think, from the Americas. And they, they, they used it for a whole lot of different stuff. And y'all, these people reported it healing all different manner of things. Uh, so more than just what I have read here, I would encourage you to get on there and do some research. Uh, there's several websites that have a lot of information. A lot of other books have some reports. So check the links in these videos of medicinal plants, and I'll have links probably to some websites and, uh, and other books that I've, I've got some books that's only in digital copy. And uh, they have a lot of good information in them as well, a lot of like testimonials and stuff. So uh, read that. You may be interested if you want to learn more about it. Uh, but thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. We'll see y'all next time.